Now that Marjorie Trader Greene has graciously allowed Kevin McCarthy to sit in her lap and play Speaker of the House, it's time to look at how that decision might potentially trigger a global economic catastrophe later this year. All right, I know that sounded very apocalyptic, but there's basis for it. But for the sake of cogency and, and understanding, we need to provide some context, okay? So back in November or December of 2021, as Ruminate, I did a video about the United States debt ceiling, which is broadly what this video is going to be about. And the debt ceiling, if you want to think, conceptualize it very easily, in a very crude, very distant sense, you can think of it as the credit card limit of the United States, right? So like a person might have a credit card limit, the United States also has one too, very crudely speaking. Now, unlike people, the U.S. credit card limit, the debt ceiling, is self-imposed. Nobody is imposing it on us. We have decided as a government to impose a limit to how much the United States Treasury can borrow to pay its obligations, to pay its debts, to pay the bills, okay? And because the Constitution vests the power of the purse, and so everything financially related, appropriations, you know, printing currency, things like that, to Congress— Congress is the, the branch, not the president, not the, the Supreme Court, but Congress is the branch that decides whether or not to raise the debt ceiling to accommodate additional spending, additional obligations, and additional bills. That's been the case basically since 1939, when at between uh, World Wars I and II, we essentially consolidated uh, all of our you know, aggregate federal debts into one federal debt, and, and it's been that way ever since. And the reason I did the video about it in 2021 is because at the time, there was a standoff or a showdown between Democrats and Republicans in Congress about whether or not to raise the debt ceiling. Now, to be clear, it's been raised a gazillion times. In the past, I, mean, I think since 1960, it's been raised by Democratic presidents about 30 times. And it's been raised by Republican presidents about 50 times, okay? Okay. So raising the debt ceiling is nothing new. It's nothing rare. And in many cases, it's nothing special in terms of its frequency, right? It's just something that is done regularly. And during the Trump administration, it was either suspended or raised three or four times, right? Democrats and Republicans worked bipartisanly to raise or suspend the debt ceiling to accommodate spending under the Trump administration. But when President Biden was elected, Republicans went back to their old refrain of, well, we need to be fiscally responsible. We can't be too reckless about raising or suspending the debt ceiling, and certainly not without pairing it with cuts, even though they didn't do that under the Trump administration. They didn't require President Trump to pair his spending with cuts, right, with spending cuts, right? They just basically gave him a blank check and said, yes, sir, we'll, we'll help you. We'll raise your credit card limit however you want. But then when a Democrat becomes president, well, then the standard changes. Like, hey, whoa, if you want to spend more, you're going to have to cut more. And so that was the scandal at the time in 2021. That was the showdown between Republicans and Democrats, and particularly responsible Democrats and hypocritical Republicans. Hypocritical Republican, I repeat myself. Anyway, what happened was the situation was able to be resolved. No thanks to Republicans. They essentially allowed Democrats to just vote on a simple majority to raise it themselves after playing chicken with them for weeks. Republicans said for weeks they were not going to help Democrats vote to raise the debt ceiling, but they did allow Republic Democrats to change the rules so that Democrats could raise the debt ceiling on their own. Now, you might be asking yourself, what the hell would have happened if that didn't happen if we had not raised the debt ceiling? Well, then we would have defaulted. The United States, for the first time in its history, would have defaulted on its obligations. The Treasury wouldn't have been able to pay its bills. That means they wouldn't be able to pay federal employees which, by the way, you might be thinking, well, to hell with those bureaucrats, they don't deserve a paycheck anyway. Well, if you're a centrist or a conservative watching, that also means that the government would not have been able to pay our troops, okay? It, we also wouldn't have been able to issue Social Security payments. Uh, we would not be able to um, do many, many things, right? So anything that the United States is involved with in terms of its, its spending, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do. And because the United States dollar and the United States economy is basically the bedrock of the global economy, it would have triggered widespread global catastrophe, 
right? I, I made some notes back in 2021 when they were talking about the potential consequences. Like Moody Analytics back in 2021 would have said it would have cost, if we defaulted, it would have cost us 6 million jobs in the United States alone, 6 million. Unemployment would have jumped back up to at least 9%. Stock prices would have probably dropped by 33%. $15 trillion in household wealth would be lost. U.S. troops and service people wouldn't be paid. Federal workers wouldn't be paid. And so on and so forth. And again, that's just domestically, right? The ripple effects globally would have been profound. Now, again, we were able to avoid that thanks to responsible Democrats. But Republicans tried to make it as difficult as possible because they knew that if something were to happen economically because Joe Biden, a Democrat, is the sitting president, and therefore, in the eyes of many people, he gets all the credit or all the blame for whatever happens to be going on at the time. They were willing to engage in brinksmanship, bad faith, irresponsible brinksmanship. Well, that brings us to uh, 2023. So New York Times did this really good expose about, again, a potential and— I don't know how probable it is, but it's it's certainly quite possible, and the probability isn't slim, right? It's reasonably probable that this will happen. But the speaker drama raises new fears on the debt limit. And essentially, it, it's kind of the culmination of what we were talking about um, in the past few days. In order to get the votes that he needed to become Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy gave away the farm. He gave away everything. He gave away all kinds of leverage, made all sorts of commitments, not just to moderate Republicans, but more dangerously to the far right uh, block of his caucus, the Freedom Caucus. And that's scary because these people are deranged, bad faith culture warriors with no sense or, or interest in responsibly governing. We're talking about people like Matt Gates and Jim Jordan and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, people who are just interested in culture war nonsense, right? They don't care about responsibly governing, quietly governing, making sure the trains run on time, making sure checks are in the mail appropriately. They don't care about that. That's not what gets likes and, and stuff on Twitter. That's not what gets you an appearance on Tucker Carlson. That's not what earns you the favor of Donald Trump. They want to make waves. And so one of the concessions that um, that McCarthy made uh, to, to these people and to the Republican Party as a whole is he made a commitment that there would not be any legislation to raise the debt ceiling unless it was paired with spending cuts and that any of these things would go to the floor um, for a vote. So... Congress has had a particular Congress has a particular a handful of particularly vital tasks to perform. Sorry, I'm having a mild stroke here. Passing a dozen spending bills that keep the government fully funded and raising the statutory borrowing limit. By the way, the, the spending bills are typically paired as an omnibus bill, which is what we saw in December, thanks to Democrats that we were able to pass in order to keep the government funded. And raising the statutory borrowing limit that allows the Treasury Department to finance federal debt. If it cannot pass the funding legislation, the government will shut down. If it cannot increase the debt ceiling, the government could reach its first ever, ever debt default. Those tasks are already going to be difficult with a slim Republican majority and an intransigent, intransigent uh, right-wing faction bent on slashing spending and debt. Mr. McCarthy's concessions only made them harder and potentially impossible. Dissidents won his commitment to open spending bills to unlimited amendments. Right. So that means that any that these people can pass unlimited amendments to spending bills, effectively allowing them unfettered chances to gut or filibuster legislation with proposed changes. So that means if we need to pass legislation to raise the debt ceiling, the Freedom Caucus can try to attach one amendment or append one amendment after another after another, allowing endless debate, endless filibuster, which costs us time because the debt ceiling has to be lifted at a certain point. Period. By the time that the Treasury Department runs out of funds, we're in deep crap, right? And the, the Treasury Department has very few options to, to like, uh, buy Congress even more times. I think they're called extraordinary measures. But it involves basically triaging spending, shutting down quite a bit, and uh, it's very risky. Um, so, yeah, that's a commitment that uh, McCarthy made to this caucus. And again, it's incredibly dangerous. And again, we have, no, we have no reason to believe that the Freedom Caucus has any interest in avoiding a, a, um, a, the first default, right? Because again, from just a broad view, Republicans campaign on fiscal responsibility, 
even though even though and this cannot be stressed enough government the republican party their modern record in terms of fiscal responsibility and economic prosperity is garbage it's terrible they're really really good at pitching themselves as caretakers of the economy and stewards of economic prosperity but they're not certainly not compared to democrats Economic prosperity, fiscal responsibility is more closely associated, if you look at the policies and the outcomes, with Democrats than Republicans. So while Republicans talk a big game, they certainly don't govern that way. And especially in the hands of these deranged extremists in the Freedom Caucus, you could absolutely see them be willing to play chicken with the debt ceiling in order to get their their ends met. If Mitch McConnell, who is not a member of the Freedom Caucus, and is not nearly as deranged as these people, was willing to do it in 2021 against President Biden, there's no telling what Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and others would be willing to do. So it's a very sobering thought. It's something for each of us to think about. And that's the potential future coming later this year.